Hey, uh, I want to talk to you about part three in this uh, in this lab right here. Uh, I basically in this lab, as we build off of part one and two, these are kind of like adding a little bit more of what we call as overriding a function with it. And um, again, this is one project, and I like for you to come in and uh, exclude out main two, main underscore two, exclude that out, uh, add in a new C plus plus, call it main underscore three in your in your code with it. So I have it here. This this uh, this this is after you do that with it. Um, I like for you to go into your uh, and and talk and and put in. We're going to write our first function. This is the function prototype. Is your int power and it has as you can see the two parameters that's been passed across with this. So that's this right here. Okay, so you have a and b as being passed across as an int, and this is a value returning function. So it's going to return this expression that's is with a power function, having a base of a and exponent of b, with a pow as power. You got to use your C math library file for your header file in this as well. So in here, the third part is we're going to actually come in. I like for you inside your int main to declare some integer, integer one, integer two, integer three, with this i one, i two, i three, and we're going to do a double one, d one and p two. So if you take a look at this, and as I go through this thing, there is a correction in here. I like for you to take out. Uh, remove this P2 and remove the comma after that D1 and make it look like this. Okay, so that's that's one correction like for you have <coughs> inside of this function. You're going to actually enter two integers. And you're going to calculate the power by with a space with it. So read in. You may want to tell them um, your first integer. Enter two integer. Of course, you're reading it with a space. This stores in I1, I2 with this thing. And then you're going to ca call the power function with these two. Now, the purpose of this pro for this program is to, s to let you show you that uh, how you overload a function. You overload a function, remember what's the function name? Power. This function name is power. So to overload a function, there are several ways. One, in here, is what I'm telling you to do now is you're going to overload a function with a different, return a different value, different signature. Overload a power function with a double data type with an argument of int integer i and double d. So based off of what I just shared with you, again, how would you overload the same function that I have right here? The same function that I have right here. Look. You're gonna actually give a different data type. I'm just gonna just let me comment this out. I want to imagine this is your code. I'm not gonna write your code for you, but I like for you to be able to do this. This is from chapter six. It's not nothing new with it. You should be able to uh, to to overload a function uh, when we talk about chapter six with the same. So you're gonna instead of having an int. You're going to give a different another day type. I ask you to overload a function by using a what? A double day type with the same, with the same name, with the same power. And you're going to actually put in, you're going to have a different signature in the same. So this is going to have what? You could have the same int, but this is this time with an argument of i and d. Okay? So that's where your argument comes in here. Okay, comma, and your data type of a double and with a D. Okay, so this is what your function header. Inside this function header, you still have your return, right? Your return here. So when you do your return on this thing, you're gonna actually. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna type the code for you. I like for you to do the return inside the body, and you're gonna use the power function. But remember now, you use up here the scope of 
A and B is between these curly brackets. What did you define here as your signature, as your argument, your I and your D? That goes down here. So this is a power function. You need to complete this power function with it to return that particular parameter that you have with it. Okay. So that's my point. Is is I'm, I, I want to overload a function. Okay. With the same name. This is how you overload a function. Power power. And it knows to bind. This time when you call it the second time. When you enter in an int a. And the second time you enter in a double with this a. It should know to bind this particular function. Not this. This one's going to bind to the to integer as the parameter. This one knows to bind. This one's going to be the first parameter is going to be an int. The second one's going to be a double. That's very important. That's what you call as a overloading a function with this thing. Okay. So if you did this properly, this is what it should look like. So it's going to say enter two integers with this thing. So I'm going to do five space two. Okay. 5 raised to the square basically is 25. Now I enter in my second one, 2. Let's say I decide to raise it 2.5. Enter. So 2 raised to 2.5 is 5.65685. Let me just check that with the calculator. With this A. So here's my calculator. I want to use 2. I want to use y to the x, raise it to 2.5, and it matches what I have is, look, 5.5685. So I round off, this ends it with a 6.5 here. So it is correct with my power function, and it knows to bind the second time the first function binds an integer and an integer. The second function, power function, binds a integer to a double. Okay, that's it. So make sure you do this properly, and when you do this right, this is what it should look like. All right, thanks.